YouTube, what is up? It is the anonymous sneakerhead, the most mysterious sneaker YouTuber in the game. Back with another video for you guys today, man. And in today's episode, I got a couple of things I want to talk about, man. You all read the title. You saw the thumbnail. You already know what it is. Before we get into that, though, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who have been supporting the channel. We just hit 920 subscribers. Very, very close to our goal of 1,000 by the end of the year. If you were new here, make sure that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, man. Join the channel. Join the family. Turn on the notification bell, man. Also, make sure that you go ahead and smash that like button. Really helps with the algorithms. Helps bring more people to the videos, which can help us hit our subscriber goal of 1,000 by the end of the year. And then last but not least, make sure that you follow your Instagram, or our Instagram, sorry, at Anonymous Sneakerhead. Um, follow my Instagram at Anonymous Sneakerhead. You get a lot of information up there first. Um, particularly the next thing I'm, that I'm going to talk about, and that is the Air Max 90 Christmas or Nordic colorway dropped today. Um, like I said, today is December 7th. Um, dropped this morning on Sneakers app, and I was able to get a pair. So, so happy that I was able to get a pair for retail. It was a shoe that when I first saw it, I was like, yo, I'm, I'm very excited for these. I think I talked about them a couple times on here. I know I did a little bit. Um, a little section about them on the last episode of Sneaker Talk that I did. But yo, I am so excited that I were able to get them for retail. They retail for $130. Um, I already checked Go that They're reselling right now for like $220. Wasn't going to put that $220 out there then plus shipping and tax and all that. No. Happy I got them for $130. they are on the way. Hopefully I can get them before this week is over um, to do a review for you guys. But we'll see. And then this is really the bulk of the video. The sad part of the video is... I wasn't able to secure my pair of Jubilee 11s. Now, um, I'm not, I'm upset about it, but I'm not um, super upset because there's still a bunch of other avenues, right? But what my plan today was, was to go into DTLR and enter the, do the toy drive, give them a toy and then get my spot. I called DTLR on Saturday. Now, if you guys follow a channel like Anonymous Sneaker, I had a small channel with less than a thousand subscribers. You follow my Instagram. I'd say there's a 90% chance that you guys also father one of these three people at least. And that's UBK, uh, Flight Academy Kicks, and Snipe, Sniper Jones. So you guys would have known as well, like I did, that DTLR was doing guarantee spots for the Jubilee 11 if you did the toy drive, right? So I, I was like, cool. On Saturday, I called the DTLR that's closest to me. It's about 50 minutes away from here, a little less than an hour. I called them. I was like, yo, are you guys doing the toy drive? They were like, yeah, we are. Um, we got to wait till we get our pairs and say, if you come in on Monday, the toy drive will start then Monday morning, obviously today. And I'm like, cool. I'll see you Monday. Went over to Target, grabbed the toy. Um, little matchbox car situation, little pack. It was like, it was $11 um from target and i'm like cool i'm gonna head down there on monday and enter right now mind you i called them on saturday and buddy told me buddy that worked at that particular detail i said yeah we're starting it on monday um i get there on monday and they're like i get there today and they say yeah we we uh all the spots are gone we we gave away all the spots yesterday i was like yesterday i called y'all and y'all told me it was on on monday and they were like yeah well we got the pairs in earlier than we thought we would um, I guess they ended up getting the pairs in that night. So that Saturday night, and then they just did it that Sunday. But it is what it is. Wasn't able to secure my guaranteed pair. Um, finish line didn't come through. I've only ever caught one W on finish line ever. And that's those apple green fives that you see right behind me. Never won anything else on finish line. Um, now I got the Foot Locker, Champs, uh, Foot Action ready to go. Then also there's going to be the, the SNS raffles that I'm in. Um, I'm still going to try to get in on DTLR. Um, then we still have the East Bay route. And I know a couple other people, a couple other stores around here that there is an option, which reminds me, I actually need to go to one of them today to enter. But there's definitely options. There's definitely, definitely opportunities. There's a lot of different places to get the shoe. I'm not stressing. If it's a shoe that you want, you'll get it. And that brings me to my next topic, man. The thing that I hate the most in the sneaker community right now um, not in sneaker YouTube, just in the sneaker community in general is the hate in the pocket counting that's going on with people towards resellers. Now, me personally, I'm not a reseller. Um, most people that you think are resellers aren't resellers, at least as far as how I look at it, right? If you get, um, for example, to get a shoe, we know that it's really most of the time a luck of the draw situation. You got to put in your footwork, um, like I'm doing right now, like I told all you guys, sometimes you may get two pairs, you may get three pairs. You may get one pair and you may get no pairs. Um, 
if you get two pairs and you sell that second pair, I don't think you're a reseller. Um, if you get a pair, it's happened to me before. Um, I'm trying to think most recently, like most recently I got the Air Max 90 Safaris, which I thought were dope. I got them in hand. I still have them, but I was like, ah, I don't like them that much. I probably won't wear them. So I may sell them down the line. I may keep them. Who knows? I don't consider that being a reseller. The resellers that people are worried about are the guys that go and get 20, 30, 40 pairs of the same shoe, put them up on Instagram or their website or whatever they have and sell them. Even those people, you can't be mad at those people, especially with a shoe like this Jubilee 11. There is a price to pay for every service. Even if there were zero resellers in the world and zero bots in the world, sneakers would sell out. The Jubilee 11s would sell out. Any Jordan 11 is gonna sell out. Everybody wants it. Now, the, the problem is people just complaining. I hate when people complain and they don't put the work in. The people that are the loudest about being anti-reseller, and once again, I'm not a reseller and I'm not someone who pays resell. Um, I paid resell on one shoe, like big resell was on the Pinnacle 9s. Um, and once again, I got that shoe four years after it came out. So I don't even consider that resell as much as here's a person who had a dead stock pair of them. Let me buy them from that person. There's a lot of footwork that's put into that process. It's four years ago. That's a whole different type of reseller. That's another, a different topic for another day. But the only what I call immediate resale shoe that I ever bought was the court purple ones that came out this year. I wasn't able to get them right when they came out um, for 170 and I bought them for, I believe like 210 or 220. Maybe it might've been 220 after everything like tax and shipping and everything went out like a little over 220, but that's the only time I bought resale. So I'm not an advocate for resellers. Don't get it twisted. I am not a reseller and I do not um, buy resale. So I'm a very non-biased person, I guess you could say, in this whole realm, in this whole argument. There's no bias here. But what I hate is people getting upset at people for making money, for getting multiple pairs of shoes when they didn't put in the footwork, right? I'm not mad at the people that went ahead to DTLR and did the toy drive entry yesterday. They may have called DTLR again after I called and they may have called them later. They may have just popped in on Sunday to see to make sure and lucked up and got there. Cool, they did that footwork. I didn't do it, right? We have a problem in this country, particularly not just in the sneaker game, but in everything where people feel entitled to everything. People feel entitled to sneakers. They feel entitled to jobs. They feel entitled to in my realm, I was a college football player. I'm now a college football coach. They feel entitled to playing time without putting in the work, right? We knew about the DTLR situation. We know about the finish line raffles, the foot sight raffles. We know about the in-store raffles, all the different ways to get shoes. It's just like the people who sit back and complain about the results of a presidential election. And then you ask them if they vote and they said, nah, I didn't vote. I just don't like how it turned out. Well, shut the fuck up. You have no business being upset about that, man. That's exactly how people sound who don't go out and put in the footwork, right? For example, um, I think it was Thursday night, maybe Friday night. I know Skip Goes Hard had a live, uh, Flight Academy Kicks hopped in, Troll hopped in, and they were talking about, um, they were talking about like, one thing they were talking about was the Trophy Room 5. And the Trophy Room 5, this is a great example. You're paying resellers a service, right? The Trophy Room 5 came out only in Orlando. If you live in Montana, I don't know, that's the first random state that came to mind. If you live in Montana and you didn't go and buy a plane ticket to go to Orlando and be there and then wait and get the shoe, then you cannot be mad that these resellers got multiple pairs of them. If anything, you should be thanking the resellers for going down there, securing their pairs, and now selling them to people around the country, if not around the world, that weren't able to get to Orlando. Look at it this way. Look at the service that you're paying for. For me to get a round trip flight from where I am, a round trip flight from where I am to Orlando and back is about $300, give or take like $20 each direction, right? So it's about $300. Now let's say, I don't remember what the Trophy Room 5s retail for. Let's say they retail for 200. 300 plus 200, that's $500 right there, minimum. So if I sell you those shoes for $500, I'm not making a profit right there. So people are like, why are they jacking these prices up? Because there's work that goes behind it, right? So boom, we're sitting at $500 right now. Labor cost, bare minimum labor cost, $50, right? Now, Keep in mind with that bare minimum labor cost, $50. No one's selling these things for $550 because if I came to you and said, yo, I got $50 for you to go hop on this plane, fly six hours, pick up this shoe, come back. You don't got to pay for it, but just do it, right? That's $50 for like 
15 hours of your time or however long that'll take for you to go there and get back, right? Not worth it. So they're gonna tack on another $100, $200. And that's when you see the $600, $700, $800 price range, particularly on a shoe like the Trophy Room 5 that was limited, right? Recently, we had the Manila 4s that came out, um, 150 pairs. Unless you bought a flight to go to the store in Manila, unless you brought a flight to go there, you cannot complain. And you want those, you can't complain about resale prices. There's people that bought flights to go there. They went out there, they stood in line, they got their shoes. Yes, they did make people wear them out. So if you do buy a desktop pair of those, those are 100% fake. Um, but they went out, they did the work. Now you're paying them for that work on top of it, right? Even botters, I don't have a bot. And that's the other thing, can't get mad at botters either. Anybody watching this video, if you're competent enough to pull up a YouTube video, you're competent enough to run a sneaker bot. I personally don't put my time into that, but some people do. And I'm not mad at those people. Their purpose is to get the shoes and once again, make them accessible to other people. I heard people complaining, oh, well, my store didn't get the shoes. So resellers are messed up for resellers. Bro, that's the point. If your store didn't get the shoes, you wasn't gonna get them anyway. So now the resellers being able to sell them to you from another place, they're not gonna sell them to you for retail. That's not how that works. Why would I buy something for $200 and then just go sell it for $200? I might as well not even buy it in the first place and just leave it in my store and you could keep complaining about how your store doesn't have them, right? I might as well not go get them in the first place. So that's how I feel about that, man. Um, the, the Jubilee 11s, obviously every time, every year, around christmas people start talking about oh resellers buyers da, 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 da. but the whole sneaker community not just sneaker youtube sneaker youtube is a small part of the sneaker community you gotta think of sneaker the sneaker community is hip-hop and then sneaker youtube is like rap and then um like hip-hop culture right sneaker youtube is like rap and i don't know sneaker instagram is like beatboxing and I don't know, sneaker like consignment shops or like break dancers or whatever. There's different sects underneath the sneaker culture. Right? I don't give a fuck about sneaker YouTube. I'm talking about the entire sneaker culture, right? So y'all gotta shut the fuck up, go put in the work, stop complaining about other people doing the work and you not doing the work. You sound just like someone who's saying, man, fucking, fucking LeBron James is so lucky. Shut the fuck up. He's not lucky. He put in the work. He worked harder than anybody else. Damn, Patrick Mahomes is so lucky. No, he worked harder than anyone else. Oh my God, someone who's a politician or whatever the fuck is so lucky. No, they worked harder than everyone else. They worked harder than you. Grow the fuck up, look in the mirror, and admit to yourself that you did not work as hard as the other person. You are not entitled to something just because of the fact that you fucking breathe air. I'm getting on a tangent right here. I'm very upset. I'm sick and tired of motherfuckers counting pockets and being mad that they don't have what the next person has. Thank God this channel isn't monetized yet. Um, hopefully it will be soon. Another goal is hit a thousand. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Um, but that's all I got for y'all, man. I am the anonymous sneakerhead, man. So like I said, hit the subscribe button. If you're new here, go ahead and smash the like button, man. Really helps with the algorithm. Helps more people see the videos, which could potentially bring more people to the channel. Then last but not least, go ahead and follow the Instagram at Anonymous Sneakerhead. You get a lot of things up there first, um, particularly what I talked about at the beginning of this video. I already posted that I did get the Air Max 90 uh, Nordics or the Air Max 90 Christmas sweaters or whatever you want to call them. Um, I was able to get those, so make sure you go follow that. But that is it for this video, y'all. It was a quick rant. Shut the fuck up and stop complaining. Put in the work. I might call this video put in the fucking work. But that is it for this one, man. As always, I am the most mysterious sneaker YouTuber in the game. And never forget, it's all about the sneakers.